Recess is over and we are back on the record. Before we move on to item number, is that five? Five on, the, five on the agenda. I would like to, for the benefit of those that were not here earlier, I would like to restate uh, the protocols for this evening. Number one, only persons who have submitted written testimony to the commission will be allowed to testify, and those persons are listed on the agenda. Each testifier will be sworn and will have 10 minutes to present the testimony. Time will be strictly enforced. Three, if the written testimony exceeds 10 minutes, the full written testimony will be made a part of the record of this evening's proceedings. The commission has distributed an agenda that sets forth the persons who will testify. The order of testimony has been determined by the chronological receipt of the written testimony by the commission. While the commission is aware that there is much ongoing discourse and sentiment in our community for the matters before us, the commission expects that all persons present will conduct themselves with proper decorum and with respect for these proceedings. The commission will tolerate no disruptions or disturbances, whether verbal outbursts, applause, or other interruptions, as the commission is very concerned with having a complete and clear stenographic record, as is required by law, and for our further deliberations. Thank you very much. As we move on to the So item number five on the agenda is the VIGL Racino license application. Invited testifiers are Andrew Dubuque, CFO and principal of VIGL operations. R. Oliver David, Esquire, Director, Division of Game and Enforcement, Virgin Islands Department of Justice. Dotson James, Chairman, St. Croix Horse Racing Commission. Virgin Islands Department of Sports and Park, Sports Park and Recreation, Mr. Elroy Bates, Junior President, Flamboyant Park Horsemen Association. So um, the uh, previous witnesses, uh, Mr. Dubuque and Mr. Schieffer, haven't been sworn. We need to swear in uh, the uh, other testifiers, Ms. Wilson and Mr. Bates. I'm not going to ask you to stand, Ms. Wilson. <laughs> Uh, but you could raise your right hand. Yeah, and Mr. Bates, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you hereby affirm that the testimony you are about to give to the Virgin Islands Casino Control Commission is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, if you do, please say I do and state your name for the record. Ms. Wilson? I do. My name is Betty Leona. Thank you. Thank you. So we begin with the uh, testimony from uh, VIGL. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good evening again, uh, Casino Control Commission and DGE members, staff, and all present. Um, I am Andrew Dubuque, Managing Member of VIGL Operations. With me this evening are Mr. Ted Schieffer, COO of Vigil Operations, and um, unfortunately, uh, Jason Williams, our General Manager of Racing, was unable to attend this evening because of a death in the family. Um, and also with me uh, are Vigil Company Counsel, uh, Mr. Miles Plaskett of Dwayne Morris. Since 2016, the horse racing industry on St. Croix has been dormant. Through hurricanes, lawsuits, and honors permitting processes, we at Vigil continue to work tirelessly to change that. 
Our architectural team has reimagined what racing can be here on St. Croix, and today we are here to take that dream one step closer to becoming a reality. We must again thank the Casino Control Commission, Council, and the Division of Gaming Enforcement, and staff who has always been available to assist us in addressing our issues, our concerns, and for their continued courtesy and cooperation, we pledge to continue working with the Commission and DGE in an open and transparent manner and with compliance with all laws, rules, and regulations. Our opportunity to appear before you tonight requesting the approval of our application for an initial racetrack casino license has been a long time coming. The journey and process to this point has been sometimes very difficult, challenging, and sometimes frustrating. And I will admit there were times when I, when we thought this task might be impossible. But as long and hard as the journey has been to this point, it's also reminded me of the resilience, perseverance, and willingness to accomplish the difficult, the challenging, the impossible, that can be characterized by the Virgin Islanders and especially the Crusians. I continue to be humbled and honored to be on this journey of bringing horse racing back to where it belongs here on St. Croix. We would not be here tonight without the hard work, vision, and persistence of the many people on St. Croix, and I must personally, uh, and I must have personal gratitude and appreciation in particular to the governor and his team, including the men and women of DPNR, CZM, Parks and Recreation, and Justice. I will forever respect and be grateful to the Horsemen's Association, particularly Mr. Bates, Mr. Knight, for their support, advice, and hard work on behalf of horse racing and our efforts. And we all know it's been a long time coming. We still have a distance to go, but we can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm confident that together we will soon all achieve the goal of world-class horse racing and gaming at the Randall Doc James racetrack. The casino at the Randall Dock James Racetrack, which is what we're here to discuss today, a facility we call the Caravel West, is designed to incorporate gaming, food and entertainment with over 15,000 square feet of total entertainment area. Visitors will be welcomed by the newest gaming options, up to 200 machines for all to enjoy. Our 20-foot ceilings and generous bar and entertainment area will provide a fun atmosphere for music and dancing. Our restaurant will give those hungry for some delectable cuisine, a place to relax and enjoy the sights and sounds of the Caravel West's energy. Our separate OTB will provide a comfortable and engaging environment for all those who wish to watch horse racing from all over the world and be able to place wagers as well. This newly constructed casino and other improvements on the track will be the first thing that visitors see when they arrive at the airport. That's an impression that we take very seriously and that we strive to improve upon its current. From a regulatory perspective, we feel the plan submitted to the commission and approved by the governor's office, CZM, and DPNR lives up to the requirements of the executive franchise agreement. Additionally, the casino plan surpasses the requirements as set forth in the Casino Act for space and comfort. It will have a state-of-the-art entertainment facility with 200 slot machines, a full-service restaurant, sports bar, and a previously mentioned OTB. We are motivated to move as quickly as possible to make this dream a reality and get racing back to the people of St. Croix. We believe that we've provided all of the information necessary for the commission and DGE uh, and, and for the commission to determine we have met the necessary criterion for the issuance of an initial racetrack casino license. We are prepared and are happy for the opportunity to appear here to answer any additional questions with this regard in closing, again, I'd like to thank the CCC and DGE staff for their hard work and diligence in making this hearing possible. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Dubuque. Um, I failed to mention earlier that under the community testifiers that we, the commission did receive a statement from Ms. Uh, Susan Varnes, uh, who is the uh, president and COO of Treasure Bay VI, which will later be read into the record. Um, Director David, do you have any further uh, testimony? 
Uh, uh, okay, please go ahead. It's again, uh, good evening again, uh, Chairman Pickering, Commissioner Carroll, <laughs> Caroline Hummer and Purcell, Commissioner Luther Rennie, um, Mr. Dubik, other members of the VIGL team, and um, other testifiers and um, interested parties. As I indicated when I spoke during the first part of this meeting, the investigation of DGE was a combined investigation for both the applicants because of the overlap in the officers and qualifiers. So basically, I am not going to regurgitate what was stated. It's going, it would be redundant. Whatever that DGE indicated during the, first, uh, the testimony that was previously presented applies to the application of the racetrack casino. That's where we are at this point in time. So just like to accept everything that was submitted to the commission, that would be for both applications for the class four uh, VIGL casino in Christensen and the racetrack casino. Thank you very much, Director. Um, the next testifier listed on the agenda is Mr. Dodson James who is the chairman of the St. Croix Horse Racing Commission. He's not, he was unable to attend this evening and his uh, testimony would be read into the record after um, Ms. Wilson's testimony. Next, uh, we have uh, Mr. Elroy Bates, Jr., president of the Flamboyant Park Horsemen Association. Mr. Bates, you may proceed. Good evening, Chairman Pickering. Vice Chair Herman Parcell and Secretary Treasurer Rene. I am Elroy Bates Jr., President of the Flamboyant Park Hasman Association. On behalf of the Flamboyant Park Hasman Association and myself, thank you for the opportunity to deliver testimony to the Virgin Islands Casino Control Commission. The Flamboyant Park Hasman Association was asked to testify before this commission on VIGLs applications for initial Racino licensure. We, the Flamboyant Park Hasman Association, favor the VICCC granting VIGL the Racino license. First, if this Racino license is not granted, no horse racing will occur in St. Croix. Without a Racino, horse racing is not self-sustainable. Throughout the continental United States, 95% of racetracks have a racino to survive. It has been eight years since the Randall Dark James racetrack was closed. And with the issuance of this license, we are very much closer to opening. The issuance of this license brings needed monies into our economy and much needed jobs. The taxes from this racino will amount to a significant amount of new money in our economy. Also, the taxes from the workers, feed shops, and the many vendors that supply the racino and the horseman will boost our economy. Last but not least, a few of the beneficiaries of the racino are the Department of Sports, Parks, and Recreation, the Department of Agriculture, and the Virgin Islands Olympic Committee. Once again, we, the Flamboyant Park Hasman Association members, thank you for this opportunity to give testimony to the Virgin Islands Casino Control Commission. Thank you very much, Mr. Bates. Thank you very much, Mr. Bates. Uh, next, we'll have uh, Miss Betty Wilson. Uh, your your uh, testimony was uh, rather short, but please, please read it into the record. And if you have, if you have anything else to add to that, okay? Good evening to the members of the Casino Commission. I am Betty L. Wilson, and I am, I am in support for the Casino Commission granting the St. Croix Horse Racing the Casino License. Enclosed are the following bills, franchise agreements with the Racing Commission Horsemen Association and the Government of the Virgin Islands for the St. Croix racetrack. Respectfully submitted, Betty Wilson, and my uh, address is 234 Hannah's Rest, Frederickstead. My phone is 340-332-9020. Now, I am here on behalf of the past 
Racing Commission. And I'm here because I'm very disappointed in the previous Racing Commission. They never came and contacted us that they were going to close the Racino. They had problems with the Racino. Mr. Bennett just walked in one day to the office while we were conducting races. And he, I said to him, can I help you? And he said to me, do you know me? You don't know me? And I said, no, I don't know you. And if you don't want to tell me who you are, you have to go outside. He says, well, I am doing the job that the commission refused to do. I'm getting rid of Traxco. That was your job, and you didn't do it. The Racing Commission never, ever came and told us what was going on. The next thing I knew is they shut the Racino down. I was home, and I was called to get to the racetrack immediately by Mr. Anton and Mr. Brow because they were there to collect the chips from the machine. I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to, interrupt, to, to interrupt you there. Okay. Um, we, wanna, we want your testimony to stick to the matter of qualifications for the um, licensing. Uh, that's, that's our purpose here tonight. Um, so if you would kindly um, uh, uh, restrict your comments to those, well, please. I will. Okay. But I gave you all a package because I indicated that I couldn't do it in 10 minutes. So I have given you all a package of the lawsuit against the St. Croix Racing Commission, and it's still active. Okay? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to, uh, I just saw him walk in, the, uh, the Honorable Senator Kenneth L. Gittins. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Senator Gittins. Senator Gittins, good evening. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Um, we want to ask a couple of questions of the, uh, the uh, testifier, Mr. 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 Bates and Ms. Wilson, before we come back to uh, VIGL. Um, Mr. Bates, are you aware of any matters that would inform the commission as to the qualifications of VIGL or its qualifiers? Mr. Andrew Dubuque, Mrs. Suda Mrs. Susanna Dubuque, Ms. Janice Bobek, Mr. Austin Jones, and Mr. Howard Bayless. Can you repeat if I'm aware of? Of any matters that you would inform the commission about these qualifiers that I just named? No. No, okay, ma thank you. Uh, no. Ms. Wilson? No, I oh. don't know them. Okay, thank you. Are you aware of the uh, current operations at Caravel Hotel and Casino and any other VIGL businesses? And if you are aware, are you pleased with what you have seen? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, is it your opinion, if granted a casino license to operate at Randall Dark James Racetrack, that they would continue to maintain similar quality operations at this facility? Yes. Which? Similar. In Ghana, in have a racetrack, though. But there's a casino. The casino? Yes. Yeah, I think so. You, 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 yes. You're confident? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Herman Purcell, any questions for Mr. Bates or Ms. Wilson? Mr. Bates, and in your testimony, you reference a, a, a statistic that 95% of the racetracks have a racino. Yes. Is, is there somewhere you can direct me to that source material? Mm. Something you know from as your experience as a, being around racetracks? Right, as experience. The, the only racetrack I know that don't have a casino is Kentucky, Churchill Downs, Kentucky, um, Churchill Downs, that's it, yeah. But, but if you travel to many racetracks? Yes. And this is just commonplace at, at racetracks? Yeah. I'm fine, Mr. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Herman Purcell. Commissioner Renee, do you have any questions for Mr. Bates or Ms. Wilson? For Mr. Bates, just for Mr. Bates, 
Is it your testimony that horse racing will not be able to operate successfully without a racino? Yes, it is. You're convinced of that? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank Can you. I follow up? Yes, now? please. Why, why, what convinces you of that? Okay. The pauses, the maintenance of the racetrack. The attendees at the racetrack don't, they're not that much people that attend horse racing. So the casino is what makes up for it. The maintenance and the pauses of the racetrack. Okay, and races would run <coughs> so many days, but just because the casino is operating on a continual basis. Races right now we know a uh, live racing agreement. We run thirteen race days per year for the first three years. Yes. And what's the other half? <laughs> but you said the casino is. It would support that people, that not enough people come to races that would support the purses and the different yes, things. Yes, and the maintenance of the racetrack. Yes. Because you only, the 13 races a year? No, not because the 13 races. Okay, we're <coughs> running for $100,000 per race day. I don't believe without the casino, they will be able to sustain that. Those, the, that's the total of the purse, $100,000 per race day? day. Yeah. These are uh, next uh, set of questions will be directed to BIGL. <clears throat> Mr. Dubuque, in your, you stated in your testimony that, and I quote, we are motivated to move as quickly as possible to make this dream a reality and get racing back to the people of St. Croix. What are the timelines for the completion of this project? Could you say that one more time? What are the timelines for the completion of this project? <clears throat> well, the entire project. <clears throat> the entire project, I, I, I think that's going to depend a lot on, uh, going to depend a lot on our permits, obviously. But um, I hope to have everything completed in under 24 months. You said uh, depending on the permits, but you do have some permits in place? Do you have more permitting? We do. We have permits in place to, to start. As soon as we get our license, we can start uh, pouring the foundations. So what other permits do you need to get? There's probably going to be 30 other permits that need to go down the line. Oh. There's electrical permits and oh, there's oh, uh, framing permits and there's, yeah, I mean, just the normal construction kind of permits. We don't need anything particularly big like the CZM permit that we already have. Mm -hmm. um, or any large DPNR, most of it is going to be related to construction. Thank you. Uh, any projections for uh, gross gaming revenue, uh, one year, two year, three years up? And, and any um, uh, re projected taxes uh, that you plan to pay uh, yeah, I, I, based I, on those? I, I would say, um, I would say that we, we, we project that we will well, let me, let me answer the question in a way for, you know, a, a public forum, I think, that would make the most sense. I think that we anticipate that we'll make enough revenue uh, to, to, to uh, comfortably pay um, $100,000 a day in, in, in racing uh, for, was it 13 races a year? Yes. So we feel that $1.3 million in purses we will comfortably be able to pay. And we anticipate paying gaming taxes of anywhere between, depending on uh, how the experience is for our customers, between two and a half to three and a half million dollars a year in gaming taxes. Okay, thank you. Um, turn to Commissioner Renee for your line of question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is required that you submit with your application an economic impact plan, what you call a marketing survey. What you submitted is devoid of any statistics as to how the economic impact 
of St. Croix will be. We were disappointed that it was very, very lacking in how did it impact the economy of St. Croix? For instance, you mentioned that VIGL improved tax generates employment, will generate employment opportunities, providing income for local workers. But there were no, what is the estimate of the number of jobs do you anticipate will be created during the construction phase? There was no, what, what is your estimate of jobs or job creation? So um, job creation, well, would you like job creation after construction and during construction or just Let, during let's, construction? Let's separate them. During your construction phase, what do you anticipate would be the economic impact on that? Well, the, 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 the entire project, I think, when soup to nuts is going to cost at least $20 million. So if you say that between 15 and 20 percent of that is uh, direct labor as opposed to materials. We're talking up to four million dollars of, of, uh, of direct cash going right into the community. Okay? Um, we don't <coughs> anticipate hiring anybody from off island. We, we, we obviously have been working with, as, as the commission knows and the community broadly knows, we've been working with on island contractors who have uh, their, their own employees, but also use subs as well. Um, does that answer your question for the, in the first part? I just want you to repeat, 20% of 20 million? We believe, you know, brought, I'm not the contractor, but what I know about how contractors operate, approximately 20% is going to be labor, and that labor goes right into the community. So that's up to, let's say, about $4 million uh, is for salaries uh, into the community. Now, once the uh, casino is built, um, we anticipate there's uh, 50 new casino jobs, um, probably around 20 new racing jobs. Um, now, on race day, that's a, an additional 35 people, 30 to 35 people that we're going to need on race days. Um, and then inside the, uh, the, the food and beverage and entertainment, inside the, uh, the racing entertainment center, another probably 20 people. So that's 50, 70, that's 90 people, 90 additional uh, employees on top of our existing 94 on a full-time basis and then on a part-time flex basis uh, for race days, an additional 35 on top of that. So you're talking 125 people, um, uh, uh, most of them being full-time employees. That's pretty significant. At our average, what's our average... Uh, Per hour, 19 something, 1920? Yeah, the average uh, wage right now in the casino is $20.54 an hour. Yeah, so on a, t on a $20 base, what, $20 at uh, 52 times three? Uh, we're, oh, we're talking well north of $7 million per, on a per, per, annual, per annum. Okay, you also indicated the influx of money can lead to increased spending in the local economy. But nowhere did you mention on the multiplier effect you take into account the multiplier effect, or do you have an estimate of the levels of spending that will be generated because of this initial first wrong spending? That's a really good question. I think the multiplier effect is certainly in play here. Once, once a dollar gets spent, I, I, I don't know what the multiplier effect here is in the Caribbean. I think that, that that's actually a really good question. I know uh, regionally in the United States, it differs it, it, anywhere from 1.3 to 1.8, depending on you know, depending on the region. Let's just take the median there and say it's, you know, 1.5. Um, so for every dollar get, that gets spent, you, uh, d depending on what people do with it, a lot of it gets consumed, some of it gets saved. Absolutely. Um, uh, I, I, I think that one could reasonably argue a 1.5 multiplier here in the Caribbean, I, unless there's an economist in the room that can tell me otherwise. I think that's probably reasonable. So, yeah, we're looking at six to six and a half million dollars in, including multiplier effect just in the construction phase of, of the casino and, and related track infrastructure. Do you anticipate importing any labor? No, no, sir. No, you can get all labor in the local market, you think? I believe so. We're going to leave it up to our general contractor to, 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 to have labor, but I know that they've got rules and I know that they've got uh, 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 labor, and as far as I know, there is no shortage of labor here on the island of St. Croix right now. Um, so 
there's been no talk uh, on my team or on my contractor's team of importing labor. The, you didn't mention some of the externalities that we expect. You, you did mention one, which was problem gambling. What else do you anticipate with the Racino so easily accessible? What other externalities you anticipate? Negative externalities? Negative, yes. I mean, you know, we've got problem gambling, I think, we're, as, as you know, we're, we're, we're very in tune to making sure that that doesn't happen. It's obviously um, something that's near and dear to our hearts, and, and same with the commission. Um, I actually only think there's, there's, to be honest, positives. Really, particularly as it relates to St. Croix and, 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 the, and the visitors that we have on St. Croix, the first thing they see right now is a dilapidated racetrack with a big dirt pile on it. Um, I, I don't think any of us are proud of that right now. I, I, th I think the vision of St. Croix needs to be changed from that perspective. That, that is, I think, is number one, that, that the people that come and see us, that we, it's, it's the first thing that they see we want to be proud of. Um, I haven't really considered many negative externalities to, uh, to, to, to bringing racing back and to, to, to bringing additional gaming entertainment for our, uh, uh, for our customers. Um, you also mentioned, and I quote, in addition to aggressive anti-addiction measures employed by all island existing licensees, we must expand to include any new gaming facilities on, the, on St. Croix. Can you give an example of the ant aggressive anti-addiction measures now practice that you will adopt for the Racino? Uh, Ted, could you yeah, take that uh, for me? Yes, uh, it'll, it'll be a duplication of what we have in the existing uh, property. Uh, you know, basically identifying problem gamers, uh, having pamphlets, having all the literature available for them to seek help. Uh, and, you know, it's pretty much practice in every casino. Do you anticipate the level of leakages from the economy based on, you did mention St. Croix is an open economy. Do you anticipate what level of leakage from our economy that might take place? Could you please explain what you mean by leakage? In your statement, you said that St. Croix is an open economy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we anticipate some leakages. You'll spend the money here, but it will get out. Do you have any estimate of what might leave? I don't think it would be any different from leakage that would occur, and by leakage you mean money leaving the island as opposed to being spent here on the island. I, I don't think you'd be any different from uh, the leakage that occurs in the existing facility downtown. Um, in fact, it might even be less. Um, I, I, well, it's tough to say, I, because we do have the airport right there, so you're going to have people that come before they get on their airplanes, they're going to come, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna win five thousand dollars and get on the airplane go back to Atlanta and spend it there that's entirely possible um, but I think by and large the money that we spend from our expense categories that go to uh, the people of St. Croix and that go to um, uh, the taxes that we spend spend here on St. Croix I think that the, the, the those kind of leakages will be kept to a minimum specifically uh, due to the fact that we have mostly bona fide residents of uh, not only the territory, but of St. Croix as employees, and we don't intend to change that. In fact, we, we, we strive pretty hard to make sure that's a high number. I think right now it's in the mid to high 90s. Um, we don't anticipate changing that at all. So I think the monies that, that, that we provide, I think, will be about the same leakage, if you will, that, we're, that, uh, that we have right now. You may have, meant, you may have answered that question prior to once in operation, what's the level of sustained employment you anticipate? So I'll just break it out again. 50 new casino uh, employees, uh, 20 uh, racing uh, employees, and these are all permanent, uh, and 20 F&B employees. So that's 90 full-time for the Racino, 
food and beverage and the, and the, and the racing and the racetrack. And on top of that, we estimate on race day an additional 35. So 125 uh, full and part-time with 90 of those being uh, full-time. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Rene. I, I think I committed a boo-boo earlier. I went straight to uh, questioning and um, we do have uh, two more testimonies to be read into the record. So, um, Madam Clerk, would you please read those uh, testimonies or statements into the record? First testimony is from the St. Croix Horse Racing Commission, dated February 9th, 2024. Addressed to Marvin L. Pickering, VICCC Chairman, CEO, Virgin Islands Casino Control Commission, 3005 Orange Grove, Christian said VI, 00820. Regarding VIGL Operations LLC application for Racino license at the Doc James Racetrack. Dear Chairman Pickering, I anticipate all is well with you and the other members of the Casino Control Commission. I would like to thank you for inviting me to testify on behalf of the newly created St. Croix Horse Racing Commission. Unfortunately, I will not be able to attend to testify due to a long-awaited scheduled appointment. The St. Croix Horse Racing Commission looks forward to a smooth transition for VIGL to commence the construction of all infrastructure associated with horse racing as well as the operation of horse racing on the island of St. Croix. A license to operate a racino at the Rondell Dock James Racetrack is critical to the overall success and development of horse racing as an industry. This industry of horse racing is an industry that provides many jobs and opportunities for individuals, young and old, to earn a decent living. The racino itself will not only provide casino jobs, but will also provide funding for horse owners to compete for modern day purses purses comparable to those on the U.S. mainland. The earnings, the earnings by horse owners will allow for the employment for additional help in the form of grooms, hot walkers, and muckers, as well as exercise riders, which creates another tax base for the government of the Virgin Islands. Again, my apologies for being unable to attend. If you have any further questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me. Respectfully, Dotson K. James, Sr. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, is there uh, another statement to be read into the record? Yes, Chairman. Would you please proceed? Statement received from D.B. Carina Bay Casino, dated February 14th, 2024. Addressed to Honorable Marvin L. Pickering, Chairman, CEO, regarding Racino license. Dear Chairman Pickering, I offer this narrative pursuant to the Casino Control Commission's public notice of a special meeting and a hearing for the sole purpose of determining the qualifications of VIGL Operations LLC for a Racino license. As the Commission is aware, Treasure Bay VI Corporations, known as TBVI, subsidiary Trasco Inc., operated the Randall Dock James Racetrack on St. Croix from 2004 to May 6, 2016, and TBVI operated a racino at the track for two, from 2011 to May 6, 2016. To be clear, Trasco operated the racetrack for seven years prior to opening of a racino. And once again, legislation was passed. It was incumbent upon Trasco to maintain live horse racing in order to operate a racino. Section two of the Racino Act Act number 7169 states, the purpose of this act is to provide for slot machines at licensed horse race tracks in St. Croix to increase and supplement pari mutual betting revenues to sustain and make viable the fallen horse racing industry. I would also like to point out that during Trasco and TBVI's tenure at the track, all purses, commitments, and responsibilities were met with regard to the horsemen, live racing, and the government long before a racino was opened. Trasco and TBVI were removed from the track on May 6, 2016, which we purport 
to have been unlawful. Trashco filed an action for declaratory judgment, a DJ action against the government of the USVI and the VI Horse Racing Commission for the unlawful removal in 2016. Shortly after this removal, we became aware that VIGL had been in negotiations with the government to make an investment in the St. Croix racetrack of approximately $14 million, with improvements to be completed in not less than 24 months and substantially completed within 42 months following approval of the plan. Once the DJ action was filed, Trashco was approached by the government to enter into negotiations for a three-party agreement with the government and VIGL encouraging us to withdraw the DJ action. Negotiations led to an agreement that Trasco and TBBI would return to the racetrack to operate a racino if we would agree to give up those rights after two years. Very specific agreements were negotiated requiring VIGL to not only make improvements at the track but also to construct a racino for TBBI to operate for two years. As a matter of record, all of these agreements were approved by the Casino Control Commission. The improvements VIGL, VIGL committed to were spelled out in the agreement executed in October 2016, along with a franchise agreement between the government and VIGL. That was seven and a half years ago. The franchise agreement has since been renegotiated due to the fact VIGL no longer has access or responsibility over the St. Thomas track. However, it is my understanding that VIGL is contractually obligated to invest $15 million on the Randall Dock James track. We understand that VIGL has now come before you for a Racino license. While we are not commenting about VIGL's suitability to operate a Racino, it is unclear why VIGL would come before you at this stage as there are many requirements that VIGL must complete prior to operating a Racino. Most notable is construction and operation of a live racing facility and the fact that Trasco and TBVI have the opportunity to operate a racino for up to two years prior to VIGL operating a racino. Additionally, it is unclear how a racino could be in operation in the absence of live racing. We respectfully suggest that VIGL's racino license not be considered until VIGL is fully compliant with all binding agreements with the government, the Harsman, Trasco, and TBVI. Sincerely, Susan Barnes, President. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Clerk. We are going to move to some more direct questions to VIGL. Um, Mr. Dubuque, or your team, Reference is made on page three, paragraph five of your petition for a consent resolution of a settlement agreement, stipulated judgment, and transition agreement. Please explain what those documents are, how they came about, and their relevance to the application before us. Yeah, for the record, again, uh, Miles Blasket for VIGL. <clears throat> the Consent agreement, um, as indicated in the referred to by um, representatives of DV, was came as a result of uh, litigation between DV and the government, um, where our part, VIGL's part of this uh, transaction, was in the negotiation of a franchise agreement. The government was in the process of settling with DV and entered into the settlement agreement and uh, the, the consent agreement to uh, is get rid of the litigation, the declaratory judgment <coughs> that was requested by DV. There's a transition agreement between uh, the government, uh, DV, Traxco, the, the names are, and a copy of those agreements were attached to the petition. Um, and VIGL. Um, all of them reference the franchise agreement and the requirements for uh, VIGL to obtain, specifically in the franchise agreement, as a condition, uh, respective dates of the agreement to begin, um, uh, a racino, uh, a race track casino license uh, 
for operation at the Dock James Racetrack. But just to follow up on that, uh, how, how specifically how do those documents relate to the, to, to, to the application that's before us now? They, only, they relate in the, to, to the extent that the franchise agreement <clears throat> that VIGL entered into with the government requires that, among other things, that VIGL have a racetrack casino license in order to operate at the racetrack. Okay, um, we probably come back to that, but uh, let's move on. Um, again, on your uh, petition, references made, I believe it's on page two, paragraph B uh, of the consent resolution of the franchise agreement, VIGL has entered into with the government of the Virgin Islands. Please explain the significance of the franchise agreement as it relates to the application for an initial casino uh, racino, um, license. Right. The, fran <clears throat> the franchise agreement is for or grants to VIGL the, um, the franchise of operating um, the, the racetrack, the horse racing at the racetrack, and a racino at the racetrack. Certain requirements in order to do so. <laughs> one and one requirement, and what we think is the most important requirement, is that VIGL obtain a racetrack casino license in order to begin to, to, to make the, the franchise agreement effective. And the when does the franchise agreement uh, become effective? At this point, once VIGL gets the, front, the racetrack casino license, because to this point, we submit that we've, uh, VIGL has met all of the other requirements. Okay. Um, again, uh, referencing the uh, franchise agreement, specifically section 8.1, as amended, it references a project management plan that sets forth VIGL plans to restore, improve, and enhance the racetrack and its facilities. Has VIGL presented a plan to the government of the Virgin Islands as yet? Yes. You have? Yes. Okay. Um, has it been reviewed and approved by the government of the Virgin Islands? Yes. Okay. And uh, you need to make those... Um, available to us? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, okay thank you. Um, I'll turn it over to uh, Commissioner Rene for his line of questioning. Attorney Miles, is it your understanding that whatever agreement is that you have signed is contingent upon you first receiving a casino, a casino license? In order to proceed with operations at the racetrack, and it is specifically stated in the franchise agreement, <coughs> one of the conditions for the franchise agreement to become effective is that VIGL obtain a racetrack casino license. Section 8 of the franchise agreement relates to improvement and maintenance <coughs> of the racetrack facility. Section 8.2B of the franchise agreement, as amended, requires 40% of the improvements of other work described in the franchise agreement to be completed in not less than 24 months and substantially completed within 42 months. How does this requirement comport with Section 439? G of the code that requires commencement of and continued substantial construction within six months of obtaining all necessary licenses and all other requirements needed to proceed with the construction and operation of the Rosino project. Well, our position would be that, and 
the section that you referenced in the code says that if they, that cannot be done, that we would have to come back to the commission and explain to the commission why. So that's, I mean, if, if we can't meet the requirement that's in the code, we have to explain and have to show that we've been in substantial compliance, that we're making genuine efforts to do the construction within that time. It, the, the code makes provision for that. Section 8.4C and 8.6 of the franchise agreement references a construction plan that is to be contained and, and show exact design configuration, materials, budget, and schedule for the construction and renovation projects described in Section 8. Has a construction plan been developed and approved by the Government of the Virgin Islands? And if so, what does it state regarding the time schedule for construction and renovations? Specifics. Yeah, it's... It, it, as I previously answered, yes, it has been provided, um, but the specifics of the timing were not provided with the construction plan. I think Are they what different? the chairman asked was a, a project management plan. Okay. But this one asked for construction plan. I think two different the difference. Okay. Well, the construction plan and the construction management project plan um, were both provided at the same time. Um, the... I'll, I'd have to dig up exactly uh, <coughs> what was approved in terms of timelines, but I can't tell you offhand what it said in there, if they were provided at all. So, so just to follow up with uh, Commissioner Renee's question, so, and to be clear, there is a project management plan that's referenced in the franchise agreement, and there's also a construction plan. They're not one and the same, correct? Well, let's define what those two are so we, so we all understand, because I don't want to... So the construction plan, when I think construction plan, I think, okay, uh, the, the barns go here, the quarantine barn goes here, the grandstands go here. That's my definition of what a construction plan is. Do we agree on that? Is that fair? Okay. Yes, that has been submitted and approved. In terms of project management plan, it would be, okay, phase one is this, that we're going to do these things here, then these guys are going to do this. It's the management of that plan to implement the plan. <laughs> Can we agree that that's what you mean by that too? Yes, both of those have been uh, provided uh, and both have been approved. I don't, can't tell you offhand whether timelines were included in such uh, project management plans or not, but I can certainly get back to the commission and tell you. Okay, thank you. Before thank you. I uh, move on to Commissioner Herman Purcell, uh, who was the author of your market impact uh, study? Uh, who, who, who did that for you? The, 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 there was a <coughs> management. Or you didn't have a consultant um, uh, do that for you? A uh, uh, consulting firm? N no, sir. Similar to our, our, our initial license five years ago, we... we we, we feel as though we're capable, more capable, frankly, than uh, a third party to assess the market impact um, of an industry that we've been operating for the past eight years. Uh, anyone on your staff is an economist? No, sir. Not that I'm aware of. Thank you. Commissioner Herman Purcell. Um, I understand that under the franchise agreement, BIGL must have a license to operate a casino at the racetrack. I follow that. What my questions would be, or my challenge is, concerns the settlement agreement, the transition agreement, and the stipulated judgment all pertaining to that lawsuit involving Trasco and TBVI. And we've heard uh, the statement from um, Ms. Vons. Those documents, specifically the settlement agreement, transitions agreement, stipulated judgment, <coughs> reference VIGL constructing a temporary casino that, will, that they will turn over to TBVI to operate 
a racino for a period of two years. Correct? That's what it says. <laughs> Sorry, it says, <laughs> that, that's it says what, up, up, that's to, what those, up those, to two years. Excuse me, up to up two to years, two. up to two years. Question is, what is a temporary racino, a temporary casino? What, what is a temporary casino? All the, all it's a location, uh, a temporary casino, I think, uh, in, in our minds. And, and again, others might disagree, but broadly speaking, it's, it's a location, to, um, location uh, provided to, to, uh, to engage in gaming. I mean, broadly speaking. Um, it, it, the, the agreement doesn't stipulate exactly what it has to be constructed of it or anything like that. Well, in the, in the stipulated judgment, there is um, Exhibit 1A-3, lists some general, um, general specification of this temporary casino. The question is, is it the intent of VIGL to construct a temporary casino? VIGL intends to comply with all of its agreements and all of the rules and regulations of the very Casino Control Commission, and also intends to enforce all of the agreements that it has entered into. And so we, VIGL, is, will build a, a racino, the, the, the facility. We are also um, intend, we also expect that the parties will continue to talk to each other and to do what is mutually beneficial to each party and what to make sure that this thing, that it works, that the arrangement that the parties have entered into works and that it makes sense for each party. VIGL has been in contact with um, Traxco uh, DV, has had communications with them about what we're doing what we've been doing and continues to talk to them and expects that we will continue this, these discussions. But we intend to comply with our agreements as we are required and we intend to enforce our agreements as is as, as required. Okay, so these agreements, right? You went to court, the court signed off, the lawsuit was dismissed <coughs> because you came to this agreement, the settlement agreement and you had a transition agreement, and the uh, Casino Control Commission approved those agreements. Correct. For this temporary racino and an operation thereof by TBVI. Right. And there's, there's more to the agreement as well. I mean, you can read the agreement and, but you know, this is what, that the agreement says what it says. Yes. So. I think the challenge that I'm having is, is VIGL properly before the commission at this point? Who would be operating the Racino at the Randall Dopp James racetrack? Will it be TBVI or VIGL? You're saying you're going to honor all your agreements. Correct. And we will. And we, we will, if, as required. Our understanding, what we, how we read the, the franchise agreement, is that we have to have approval of a racetrack casino li uh, license in order to, the, to, to even have a franchise agreement. <coughs> right. And the transition agreement is separate from the franchise agreement and was negotiated between the VIGL and the government. The transition agreement is something, again, separate, was signed by uh, Traxco, by VIGL, and the government. The government. But the franchise agreement was, was signed by the government and VIGL. And those are the requirements that we are <coughs> complying with. And I understand, Attorney Plastic, but now I have the franchise agreements requiring VIGL to get a, have a Racino license. Right. Then I have the settlement agreement, transition agreement, 
court signs off Judge Willick's stipulated judgment. The Casino Control Commission also signs off saying we approve these documents that are, are provide for TBVI to operate a temporary racino at the racetrack. Then we have the law that says there can only be one entity on St. Croix. Correct. Holding a casino license. Correct. Then we also have a, a resolution that says uh, of the Casino Control Commission that has that TBVI by virtue of having that Casino 3 license to operate DV by extension has a license to operate a casino at a racetrack. <clears throat> Is, I'm just trying to fit all the pieces of this puzzle together and to say which entity is going to operate the casino right. at the Doug James racetrack, at the Randall Doug James racetrack. Right. Commissioner, our position is, again, there's, a, there's new legislation. The legislation says there can only be one racetrack operator. There's a franchise agreement also approved by the legislature at the same time that says that VIGL is the party that's going to be the one operating uh, uh, a racetrack casino at Randall Doc James racetrack. And that, ra that has to be approved by the casino commission. This does not, so VIGL is the only one that has, will have a racetrack casino license. There may have to be some sort of an agreement that has to be approved by the, the, race, by the casino commission allowing uh, DV to do what it wants to do if that is where we get to. But that does not forestall us from getting our casino license as required by the franchise agreement. And in, on top of that, we've done everything in, to comply with the requirements for an initial uh, racetrack casino license. So it, it doesn't, I don't think that there's any, anything stopping or hindering the casino commission from granting this license, that initial license that we're requesting so that we can continue to do what we need to do pursuant to the franchise agreement. These things, they all, our position, new legislation, new laws. This is what, so, I mean, if they want, if, I, I'm not sure how, what, what the question is, because the, the, the statute now says there's only one casino license at the racetrack, VIGL, pursuant to his franchise agreement, is the party that gets that license. So are, are, is it your position, new legislation wipes out all these agreements? It wipes out whatever happened prior that granted the, the, any license for anybody else to have a racetrack casino license at uh, Doc James Racetrack. And, and what does it do with the agreements where TBVI is in same because to give up my rights at, at that racetrack and to um, dismiss the, the declaratory judgment action, these promises were made. We relied on these agreements. Correct. And so if the, when the time comes and there is a facility constructed, they will have to request that they be, that we, that they be granted the opportunity to manage or run a race truck, a license, or use ours, or work with our, us in order to do that. Okay, wait. So, the IGL constructs the Racino. These agreements, you said TBVI would then be able to come and say, now let us have it for up to two years? That's... Again, I mean, we, we're talking hypotheticals, we're talking in the future, well, we, but the question, the, the, the answer is in the document. VIGL is the only party, the statute says, there's only one gray truck casino license. There's only one. The franchise agreement says VIGL gets that license. VIGL has applied VIGL for it. VIGL gets that license or VIGL applies for the license? Well, VIGL applies for the applies license. Applies for the license, right? Right. right. And I have a document that seems to say that TB, 
KBVI has such a license. TA, well. Right? I, 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 I beg to differ. Okay, well, that's what lawyers do. Right. They differ on, <laughs> right. right? But I'm saying you heard, well, let me do, give this. You've heard the statement from Ms. Barnes. What is VIGL's response, if any, to that statement? VIGL will comply with all agreements and enforce all agreements. Is VIGL properly before the commission? Yes. Again, because. And, and, well, okay, tell me again. Tell me again why, because. Because. <laughs> The Virgin Islands Legislature passed a statute that says there's only one casino licensee, one casino license for operation at the Randall D Doc James Racetrack. The franchise agreement says VIGL gets that casino license. VIGL has the franchise to operate a casino at the racetrack and horse racing at the racetrack. There is only one. And the franchise agreement says it's VIGL. Only one license to operate the casino. Yeah, the only one casino license. To Correct. Issue. You build, you construct on the racetrack. TBVI comes and says, under these agreements, we're now coming for our up to two years because these same agreements say you have to wait at least one year after I commence, right? There's a- um, Or, yeah, well. Or, or, yeah, yeah, and then it has, it has buyout, buyouts, right? Right. I think I'm just, like I said, I'm just trying to make all the pieces fit. I think, and I think, I'm tempted to say your honor, <laughs> I think that it's, you know, we're, we're submitting that it, it, it is, it's clear. If they, if, if, when and if, uh -huh. you know, it, there, there's a, an opportunity for them to operate a casino at the racetrack, they are going to have to come to you. It's going to have to be an additional agreement because it's going to have to be that they are doing it because we have a license to do that. Okay, so we have the the the, the only license that is that is authorized by statute and granted by the franchise agreement from the government of the Virgin Islands. So if the if the commission were to grant the license, the Racino license, your position is all it would do is then trigger. TBVI to then approach VIGL and says, say, now I want to Under, manage so, or run yeah, or whatever it is. It's essentially. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know um, the timing uh, for the Racino license that VIG, uh, TBVI says they have. They haven't operated a Racino in how many years? They haven't reapplied for a license in how many years for a Racino license? Do they, in fact, have a license to operate a racino? Was their license told because they entered into these agreements, the settlement you agreements? Have a requirement, there's a requirement in the statute that you have. No, it's not. Where does it say that? I'm, I'm asking no, you because no, I, I can no, ask the questions. That's, what it, <laughs> that's my answer. No, because it doesn't say that. Yeah, you know, it's, that's how it is. There's no waiver. There's, there's no nothing, tolling. And the casino commission would be the party that, 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 that does that. Chair, I'm gonna I'm gonna take, take a break now and let me for more some more questions for Attorney Flack. <laughs> I I um by the way um I was uh, advised that uh, when when you uh, giving your testimony you should uh, get a little closer to the mics yeah, so that um the uh, the recording is um, effective. Apologize for speaking uh, and I apologize for speaking over the commissioner because I know it's difficult yeah, to get us off. 
Do you have any uh, further questions for uh, our testifiers? Okay, just, just one. Um, and anyone can answer this question for me. All these documents that are referenced, right, um, mention temporary racino, temporary casino. W what is that? Oh, and, um, and the stipulated judgment that was signed by Judge Willox. It provided for, I think, 4,800 square feet building. What 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 is was it was envisioned by a temporary uh, racino? Okay. Sorry, what uh, is the envisioned by a temporary racino? If you say you get the license, right? You get the racino license, and TBVI then comes in, triggers. You get a license, they come in and say, we now want to operate and assert our rights under these agreements, and, and you do it through this temporary racino. What does that look like? Space. Well, it's provided for in the agreements, but it's also something that we have to work with Divi to figure out exactly, that both parties can agree. And coming and back. And the commission has to And the to commission, approve. and coming back to the commission. And the commission has to approve. Do you envision it being different than your permanent structure where we've seen the plans for? There's a lot of hypotheticals. I, we need to discuss it with Divi and the commission. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, obviously the plans that we provided are for a 15,000 square foot uh, casino and the, uh, the, the agreements, I believe, say something like 4,800 feet. Yeah. So, I mean, by the powers of deduction, yes, they would probably be different buildings. I'm just, um, it says the building will be constructed in good first class finishes to meet all applicable laws, regulations, and codes. And then will include but not be limited to, you know, commercial grade carpeting, paint, or wall covering. I mean, it struck me that you would have to say it would need paint, right? We're not envisioning trailers or something of that nature. Again, or whatever we, the parties we haven't we haven't discussed it exactly with um, with them exactly what it would look like, but that's certainly something that uh, is up for discussion. And so then, would that be something that you would then have to come back to the? Okay, we're here this evening, right? And the Racino one-year mm -hmm. licensure. So if TBVI was, you said trigger. In order, agreements. in order to get an operation certificate, yes, you have to, because you know, th this is what the what is in um, contemplated by the initial application. You go through this process, and then prior to any operation going on at the casino, you know, for, and on, uh, you have to get an operation certificate, where the commission has reviewed all of the finals of everything that's been done at the, the facility. Which I understand, right? right? But we're, we're seeing plans for a beautiful casino, which Mr. B. Buke has done things that I, you know, asked for more ladies' rooms and different things. But you're saying we could possibly go back to well, have some other type of facility. Well, again, this is what we're saying, that we continue to talk to, the parties continue to talk okay. to make sure that what, that something is mutually beneficial for all parties and that it makes sense. And it, it makes sense financially, it makes sense in terms of what's being built. But let me answer something. I think you're going down maybe this path. And in, in, in no event do, do I anticipate having a, 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 my permanent casino in 4,800 square feet, if that's... Oh, no. Okay. No, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chair, thank you. So, so just to be clear, uh, it is not <laughs> VIGL's intention to build a temporary casino facility? 
VI jail is going, the, the, my understanding, well, our, our, what we've submitted is the, are the plans for a casino. The, a permanent structure. Well, a, a, there, we don't expect that anybody's going to build something <coughs> and then knock it down and build something else. We, VI jail definitely isn't going to spend the money to do that. So this is where you, you're indicating that there has to be some Correct. kind of meeting of the minds right. uh, down the road. Right. Do you envision building your really nice facility and then turning it over to someone for a period of two years? Up to two years? There's an agreement. There are terms of the agreement to cover that and other, other instances. And you say it's just a matter if it's triggered... And we, we all can read what the agreements right. provide. Right. Okay. But we want to get moving and doing what needs to be done. Uh, oh. Uh, are, are you want to follow? Yeah, okay. you can go ahead. Uh, Commissioner Rene. Tony Miles, I want when I sit with the rest of the commission members that I am clear in my mind in what I understand this to say. I have, an, I have something before me, stipulated judgment. And I'm going to read it clearly. It says, the parties agree that Traxco's affiliate, Treasure Bay VI Co-op TBVI, is duly authorized to reopen a racino at the Randall Dock James Racetrack and occupy and operate a temporary racino constructed by VIGL Operations LLC or affiliates and approved by the Casino Control Commission. Is duly authorized to reopen a racino at the Rundle Dock, and that's the agreement that the uh, Stipulated judgment signed by Judge Willow. How should I interpret that? You have to read it in conjunction with the franchise agreement and the transition agreement, all which are, and why it was attached to the petition. All of them, you have to have to be read together in order for it to make sense. So, in, in layman's terms, <laughs> what does that say? Put all of them together for me to understand it properly. VIGL has the franchise to operate a racino at the racetrack in conjunction with horse racing. Virgin Islands legislature says VI, there's only one racetrack casino license available. Only one party can be licensed to operate a racetrack casino. VIGL the government and Traxco, DV, which the entity, entered into an agreement so as to resolve litigation between them. That said that via Traxco, that entity, will be able to have the opportunity in with VIGL's license, the parties will have to agree to operate a temporary casino license, and there's other, there are other terms in the transition agreement. Terms for you know, timing, what would happen if that doesn't happen, what would happen if uh, VIGL doesn't do it, what, what any penalties would be, all, all the, the, the any certain things that the parties could consider, but again, the parties are, you know, as, commercial parties are able to speak to one another and come to a mutually beneficial agreement. But our position, and I submit again, VIGL has the franchise. VIGL, pursuant to the statute, is the party that was enti will, is entitled to get a, a Racino license. VIGL has submitted its petition and proven by its application the um, personal history, um, everything that DGE has gone through with us, that we, that this party, VIGL, is 
meets all of the requirements to have a racino, racetrack casino license, an initial racetrack casino license. This is not an issue. The, the issue that you are looking at now, the, the questions that you are raising now, does not forestall VIGL from getting an initial racetrack casino license. There's a franchise agreement, there's statute, we've meet, met the requirements for an initial casino license. Whatever, you're t whatever is going on between whatever <coughs> the other party is suggesting has no bearing on what is going on tonight. I follow. Thank you. What the other party is suggesting, that same stipulated judgment reference that TBVI is deemed to be, have been, to be fully licensed to operate the racetrack. The, the, and, and the franchise agreement and the statute says otherwise. No, we're not. <clears throat> I don't. Um, I don't know. It's, I guess you said you're saying that it, it's, it says that it's deemed, but I don't. I'm reading something different. Wait, what, are you stipulated judgment paragraph one? No, I'm reading, yeah, stipulated judgment paragraph three. I, I'm looking at the last line, paragraph one. Um, TBVI is now deemed to be fully licensed to operate a racetrack casino. We have a, the resolution of casino, uh, the Casino Control Commission. At that time, they were. They're not anymore. And if you go on to paragraph three, and three, specifically three paragraph three B. Three B uh huh. BIGL is the one that's going to have it. There's going to have to be some sort of agreement between the parties for, um, the, for them TBVI to do any kind of operation at the racetrack. Any kind of there have to be an agreement with, um, with BIGL. There's a trend. Right, and then they would have to come. Either we would have to deem that they have a license that continues, or they would have to come back for a new one. The, or or they, you do they, a, use, they work that? with us, is what I, how I read this, that they have to work with VIGL. Or what's that um, type of license, the casino service, service entity, gaming right. game related? <laughs> right, again, one of those. that's what I'm saying. So there's no, it, it doesn't, <clears throat> what we're doing here tonight what you, are, what you have the authority to do is to grant us, if you think that we meet the requirements, and I submit that we do, you have the authority to grant us the initial casino license. They have to come and talk to us. They have to, and they have to come and talk to you in order right. to do that because they don't have a license. Okay, and, and, and I think then at this will, and the Casino Control Commission grants you that license, right? Right. I think, Mr. Dubuque, um, you, you want to start moving <coughs> soon thereafter. I do. But then now, <coughs> TBVI has to come and talk to you, and then they may have to come and talk to the commission, and what does that do to, to everything, your timeline? No, it doesn't do anything to our timeline because it? we're moving along. It, it, we, can't, you have to, we have to get an operating certificate in order to, to operate a casino at yes. the racetrack. So there, there, there is this time that is already built in there, in, the, in your process, in the Casino Commission's process, to do all of this. But then I'm saying you're then adding another corporate entity that we didn't envision until we, we sit down and, right? They're talking to you, TBVI talking to you, then may have to come to talk to us. Investigation by v, um, DG. I'm just saying, I also want St. Croix to have horse racing and all the things that, but, that go along with it. I'm just saying, what does that do to the, to the whole process of the whole time? I think it's built in. Okay. I suggest that it's built in. You will move fast. We will continue, and there, we had a discussion, there, there, there are things that have to happen along this process. So the time, it's built in. We have time. You have time to resolve this. We have time to, to, to do 
to, to get it done to, according to you know, what's required by the franchise agreement, by the statute, by the, all the agreements between the parties. Now, I guess I just want to know, you are cognizant of those agreements you had with TVVI? We submitted it along with our petition. <laughs> or, uh, I don't know. I think there were reference. There were reference. But uh, I, anyway, yeah. but you, you, you know there, and we, and TVVI we, is, is yeah, out there. We, ref, we yeah. referenced it, and we were, part, we were the ones that brought the petition to the commission for the approval of those agreements. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. <laughs> Uh, good discussion. Um, it's an appeals court judge. <laughs> <laughs> Whisper that in somebody's ear. <laughs> um, do you have any further questions for the testifiers? I just want to impress upon <clears throat> Attorney Miles that the horsemen can't wait too much longer for horse racing to but start, the, you know. No. But they can't wait much longer. So to piggyback on what Commissioner Purcell said, to add this added process of your discussion, that lengthens the time for horse racing to begin. I don't, we submit that it doesn't. There's a process, there's a construction process. Talking 24, 15, uh, uh, 16, 24. Basket, could you speak closer? I'm sorry, to me? We, yeah. and I, I'm stepping out of my lane because they're the ones that, that, that know about the construction process. <clears throat> and how long it's going to take. But I'd submit that within that period of time, we can get all of this done. What I'm concerned yeah. about is this or these agreements seem to throw a wrench in the whole process. They don't have to. Well, I hope uh, you were presently in discussions with the other parties, and things will be expedited. That's your take. Correct? Beginning with this commission approving an initial racetrack casino license for VIGL. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, uh, colleagues. Um, I'm going to, I have no further questions uh, for the uh, testifiers. I am going to ask you to give you 30 seconds to summarize, wrap up your statements on this issue. I, oh, sorry. yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Commissioner. Could I just have the DGE? DGE put on the record, um, uh, it had it recommended the licensure for the casino for license. Could you put on your rec the record your recommendations for the initial casino licensure at a racetrack known as a racino, as to all the persons whom um, your division had to investigate? I can go down on this. <coughs> okay, again, um, our Oliver David, uh, Assistant Attorney General, BI Department of Justice, and the Director of Gaming Enforcement. As I indicated before, the DG's role with regard to the entire process is to conduct due diligence investigation of all of the applicants. <coughs> Basically, as the testimony that I provided at, for the, uh, the first part of this the discussion, involve a combination of the two, since there is overlap between the qualifiers for the, the application for the, um, the renewal of VIGL's Casino 4 license and also the initial Racino license. The DGE, with, the, with regard to the applications that were submitted to the DGE, the DGE made the recommendation that the VIGL Operations LLC, DGE recommend that license be granted with certain conditions. With regard to Howard Billis, license be granted 
and there were no conditions with regard to Howard Billis. Austin Jones, likewise, license be granted with no conditions. The other applicants, that's Janice Bobek, Susanna Dubik, and Andrew Dubik. DGE recommend that the license be granted. However, the DGE specify <coughs> certain conditions that should be placed, and that's the recommendation of DGE to the Casino Control Commission. And as I indicated, the Casino Control Commission can accept or reject DGE's recommendation in whole or in part. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, before we move to, uh, well, to, to, to uh, your summation and uh, 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 next to adjournment, I'd uh, like to recognize the uh, presence of uh, Senator Carrie Young in the back. Good evening, sir. And um, Mr. Jason Williams. Uh, earlier, Mr. Dubuque mentioned that you uh, were not able to be here earlier because you had a debt in the family, and uh, I offer you our deepest and most sincere condolences. Okay. Um, summation? Summary? Um, I, 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 would, I will not belabor the point, and um, I think we've had an, an excellent discussion of, of where we are. We've submitted an application for an initial racetrack. Uh, we, VIGL Operations LLC, has submitted uh, an application for an initial racetrack casino license, which we uh, believe should be approved. We've submitted the personal history disclosure form for each natural person and uh, submitted to the background investigation that was conducted by uh, Spectrum. We've VIGL has submitted additional information and documentation as requested by the Commission to establish its qualifications and the qualifications of financial sources. VIGL has submitted information and documentation requested by the, the Commission demonstrating financial stability, integrity, responsibility, uh, the integrity of financial sources, adequacy of financial resources, uh, sufficient business ability and likelihood of success and efficient casino operations at the racetrack, including an aggressive marketing strategy. BIGL has submitted information and documentation required by the Commission establishing com compliance with uh, financial requirements uh, and uh, the applicant's requirements. We've produced the names of proposed key casino employees. Um, and as they become known, we will continue to uh, provide that information, including the description of their duties. We've uh, provided a description of the security system and management controls for the casino and related facilities. BIGL will immediately commence and continue substantial construction of the racetrack and the racetrack casino facility if it's granted the racetrack casino license, the initial racetrack casino license. Based, we, we believe, based on all of the arguments, based on all of the information that we've provided uh, so, thus far, and the arguments and in, in what we've provided tonight, that we are entitled, that we <coughs> meet the requirements for initial racetrack casino license, that the commission has the authority and all of the information necessary to go ahead and grant that uh, initial racetrack casino license. Thank you. Uh, any comments, Mr. Dubuque? Closing? I'll be more brief than, uh, than, than uh, learned counsel um, because I think he summed it up very well. I think what's important for the commission to understand, for the horsemen to understand, for any members of the Senate behind me to understand and for the horse racing community to understand is we don't take this responsibility lightly at all. Uh, we understand how important this is to the community and we will continue to take it very seriously. Thank you. Mr. Schieffer? Can you speak a little closer to the mic? Yeah. 
I'd just like to thank the commission for their time, uh, and DG as well, and we look forward to building a world-class racing and gaming facility. Thank you. Ms. Wilson. Yes, sir. Do you have any closing comments? Yes, I would like to say that the retirees, that's a nice sport for us, and I think that we need to get back on the track, okay? You'll be surprised how many calls I've received this morning let them know that we, the Retirees Association of St. Croix, wants the track back. It's not just the horsemen alone, you know, it's also a fashion show day. <laughs> Everybody comes out and we have, we have more activities out there than you all believe. So thank you very much for allowing me to come and testify. And I'll be taking the other portion up. the track scope. Okay, thank you okay. very much. I didn't forget them. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Mr. Bates, any closing thoughts? Casino Commission, thank you again. Still, we, the Flamboyant Park Hasman Association, still stands in support of VIGL. We hope you issue them the license and this matter could be resolved and our racetrack built. We have horses sitting for years ready to run. We need this issue resolved. We need our racetrack. We want it. We need it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before adjourning this special meeting and hearing, I would like to put on the record that the members of the Virgin Islands Casino Control Commission are fully cognizant of the financial and economic benefits the casino industry provides to not only St. Croix, but the entire U.S. Virgin Islands. For example, in just the last two calendar years alone, the casino hotels on St. Croix employed an average of 290 persons with an average payroll of $9.5 million a year. In the, in the last two fiscal years, 22 and 2022 and 2023, Two casino hotels paid taxes into the casino revenue fund, amounting to $4.6 million, with 75% or $3.5 million distributed to various uh, departments and agencies of the government of the Virgin Islands, such as the Department of Education, Department of Health, Department of Sports, Parks and Recreation, and the Police Department. In addition, the spending by the casino hotels for other goods and services amounted to $41.6 million in the past two years alone, and an initial license to operate a casino. The commission, aided by the Division of Game and Enforcement, has completed its, its investigation. Through this special meeting and hearing, the commission has received input from the applicants and other stakeholders. The Division of Gaming Enforcement and the public. With all the facts and other information gathered, the Commission will begin in earnest its deliberation on the matters before it. At this time, I would like to express our thanks and appreciation to one again, Senate President Novelli Francis Jr., and our wonderful employees of the legislature, in particular, the Office of the Executive Director. Uh, in addition to um, Mr. McNamara and his team, along with the legislature's media and security staffs for accommodating the commission. We thank you so much. The uh, to you, the testifiers, and the audience who took the time to be present here in the Fritz Lowitz Legislative Chamber. WTJX. Uh, I don't see the, uh, the, the government access channel, but uh, the... the they certainly uh, were uh, notified. And any other media comprising that important fourth branch of government or the fourth estate to uh, ensure that those who could not be present are still informed. To our stenographer, Ms. Andrews, who months ago agreed to serve in this capacity, thank you very much. And last but not least, to the professional executive staff of the Virgin Islands Casino Control Commission, who has worked diligently to prepare, not only for this evening, but for the task ahead. This meeting 
This special meeting and hearing of the Virgin Islands Casino Control Commission is hereby adjourned.